thing, I got a uh, photo from a friend, and he showed me a photo of this food, as well as a very normal view of this food. Is it a uh, good copy? I don't know what, what you want. Uh, from so I came down here the next morning. Uh, he showed me a photo of the before and after. So, um, uh, before, there were a lot of trees here, so if you look around here, one, two, couple more trees all around. So, this place was really covered up. Apparently, this was not the original path. The original path was um, somewhere near the bus stop. You have to press the way down and come out here. So just to show you how difficult it was in the old, in, in the old days to come and uh, visit my chapters here. Okay? This part of the cemetery, uh, once you cross the road, is actually an older cemetery. Okay? Bukit Brown is actually quite young. Bukit Brown started about 1922, right after the First World War, whereby uh, the British admin saw the need to have a municipal Chinese cemetery. Because before that, the Chinese were divided into different uh, dialect groups, different surnames and different traits. Okay? So uh, there were a lot of small, small cemeteries all around. Okay? So this was one of them. Uh, in 1872, three, um, three businessmen, uh, three businessmen, um, were Hokkien, the surname were Ong. They bought over this piece of land, about 200 plus acres or hectares, I can never tell. Um, and uh, initially, the idea was to to have it for their clan's people to come here to, you know, uh, settle down, make a living, uh, lots of land to farm, yada yada. But as time goes by. It kind of became a cemetery. Okay, so this part came out actually uh, from the 1880s, 90s forward. So everybody here is an Ong, or married to the Ong. Okay, um, and uh, if you have somebody here, uh, sorry, if you have an ancestor here, good luck because the records here are not that great. It's very hard to find somebody here. Okay, who is this person? Um, if you know Mustafa, the big. Um, Shopping mall, supermarket. Um, right in front, there's a road called Sai Awi Road, and after that, there's a road called Samleong Road. Okay, on Samleong is one of the Hokkien pioneers in Singapore at the turn of the last century. Um, on Samleong had a son called Ong Boon Tat. Ong Boon Tat, if you know uh, Lao Pasat, the the big um, hawker center, and beside it, there's a road where at night they actually lay out the tables for his sell sell satay. That road is Boon Tat Street. Okay. So obviously some the family that's rich and powerful. This lady is Buntat's first wife. Ong Sam Leo and Buntat are buried in Hill Tree on the other side. So why is the first wife here? Of course she, she died pretty early. She died in 1917. Um, but her family was apparently quite rich and powerful as well. That's why uh, her, her coffin was actually laid in um, her parents' home, not in the in-laws' home. And so when she was laid down, the, the in-laws will, um, the parents put her here, okay? And separated from the, the, the husband's family. So that's why she's separated from the, uh, the husband's family, okay? Um, that's not, I mean, we really don't know much about the wives, really. So, in, and even from the, the inscriptions, so we, we know that the family from Tsingmen. Tsingmen is interesting because um, um, Tsingmen is an island of Taiwan <laughs> and it's the island that's very heavily fortified because Taiwan is always afraid that uh, China will attack them. Okay, so this is Tsingmen. And then this is the the, 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 the the date when she passed away. So this one gives you the, the Gan Zi calendar, which is, a, which is a traditional Chinese calendar that goes in a 60 year cycle. Okay. Um, then this is a name, and then it only lists down uh, one son. Um, interestingly, um, I was told that um, when she passed away, the son was only eight years old. So it's probably her family, la, but I think they put the son's name. Um, this one is a bit short, so I don't think so. Are you is it ashes or what? You remember? Sorry? Claire, let's Claire. Claire's not here. Uh, Yipong ah? Yipong. Yipong. Was it body or Sorry? was it her body or her ashes ah? Body. Huh? Body. Body. Very short leh. Yeah, but usually the the coffin is behind. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. What's up here does not reflect what's down there. Okay. 
so the, the coffin is probably straight and long, but uh, the size here is very small. So the perimeter of this tomb is is right up there. Okay, you all just came down from the top down. So from there, all the way to the back, it's about 20 meters. Okay, so this is a huge tomb. If we clear all these trees, we should be able to see this on Google Earth, lah. Just like the the father-in-law. The father-in-law, Ong San Leong's tomb, is the only one you can see from Google Earth. So you look at this whole piece of greenery, and then you see one white patch, and that's the father-in-law's tomb. So this one, if you clear, I think you should be able to see as well. Okay, this is um, there I say a pretty traditional Hokkien design tomb. Okay, so you have your tomb shawl, that's the perimeter. The, that area is considered the mole, although it should be right above where the coffin is. So this is the, the headstone. Um, the, sho the shoulders, arm, shoulder, arm, shoulder, arm, shoulder, arm. So this one has a lot of shoulders, a lot of arms. Uh, just reflect how, how wealthy and pressure they are. Um, this one doesn't have that many statuaries. They have a pair of lions outside, I guess. Um, usually the ones outside are the ones that are used to wall off evil, protect them. Okay. Um, right, right over there is uh, this tomb's uh, what we call earth deity. Okay, because um, the tomb is on the ground, it got to pay respect to the, the earth god. Okay, so that's, that's the tomb's earth deity over there. Okay. What's also interesting is if you look right behind you. Right behind you. <coughs> And it's actually a fish. So I think this is supposed to represent a kind of a moat. Okay, so you have one fish here and one fish there. And uh, here's a little drainage for you. <coughs> but it's not in a straight line because uh, water is supposed to flow slowly so that the fortress don't flow out. Okay. And uh, one more thing to share with you. Uh, in Chinese tradition, the male is always on the left side. So from over I am, this side is always the male side and this is the female side. Okay? So if you see the name, the left, your right is the male and the left, your right is the, your, your right, your left is the female. Okay? So if you look at the ages, you will notice that uh, this side is kind of rounded. Or oh, that side is kind of sharp. So, so what happened is um, they always call the male side the dragon side, and the female side the tiger side. So that's a dragon claw, and the other side is the tiger's paw. Yeah, you can actually see it if you Yeah, when you, I think when you go up again, you can just look down and you can see that those sharp edges. Yeah. And this is probably the only hole that's actually feature. Very unusual, very unique. And where I'm standing now, right now, if you can see the border, so yeah, if you can see this, this is actually the edge of the actual tomb side. So all the way up there, we just came down the block, right? So this whole place actually is part of the tomb. So it's really huge. Yeah. So anything else before we... Any questions so far? Anybody has any interesting perspective or what? So they actually uh, decided to have a, a, a common communal one for all the different uh, race. Also all the Teochew, Hokkien. Uh, and then this is say off. So the question of why she's isolated from her relatives, uh, one of the reasons is because of the 